When race fans think of Danica Patrick, they think about her terrible NASCAR career. She's only known for her non-stop crashes and her historic 2013 Daytona 500 pole run by being the first female to lead the field to the start of 55th edition of the Great American Race. But they mostly remember her for being one of the worst drivers in NASCAR history. What's unfortunate is that some race fans do not pay attention or remember her time in IndyCar. However, that is not going to stop me from making this video. I have always paid more attention to her IndyCar career for the past few years and I personally think Danica's IndyCar career deserves more attention since she did pretty solid over there. The purpose of this episode is to revisit Danica's career in IndyCar to refresh some memories from longtime race fans and educate new race fans. Here's the story of Danica Patrick's IndyCar career. To begin this episode, I know a couple of guys who knows how to tell a story of a driver's earlier career in IndyCar. Mike, Steven, take it away, gentlemen. Danica Patrick was born on March 25th, 1982 in Beloit, Wisconsin. Born to a working class family, Danica began karting at the age of 10 and achieved early success by winning her class in the World Karting Association Grand National Championship. That's a mouthful. Three times in the mid-90s. Danica dropped out of high school with her parents' permission in 1998 and moved to the United Kingdom to further her career. She competed in Formula Vauxhall and Formula Ford before returning to the United States in 2001 due to a lack of funding. In 2002, she competed in five Barber Dodge Pro Series races for Bobby Rahal in Rahal Letterman Racing. Danica later raced in the Toyota Atlantic Series for the next two years. Although she was winless in that series, her best points finish was third in 2004. She also became the first female to win a pole in the series. Thanks, guys. If you guys want to see more of Mike and Steven, subscribe to Indie Fanatics and F1 Fanatics for more of their content, links in the description below. Now, let's begin talking about her IndyCar career, shall we? In 2005, Danica Patrick started her rookie season in IndyCar with Ray Hall Letterman Racing. In 17 races, she had 0 wins, 0 podiums, she led 63 laps and her average finish was a 12.5 with 5 DNFs. 1 DNF due to engine problems at Michigan. Her four DNFs were crashes at Homestead, Milwaukee, Sonoma, and Fontana. But as expected for a rookie, there will be some bumps on the way during the learning curve. However, her highlight of the 2005 season was, of course, the 2005 Indianapolis 500 when she led 19 laps. She had the race won until Dan Weldon passed her for the lead after the caution came out with two laps to go due to Sebastian Bordet crashing. Dan Weldon would win his first Indianapolis 500, while Danica Patrick finished fourth in her 500 debut. It was surely a historical moment for not only an IndyCar, Indy 500, and motorsports, it was an amazing moment in sports in general. Also, she led 32 laps at Motegi. She finished 12th in points. Danica also won the 2005 IndyCar Rookie of the Year, won the 2005 Indy 500 Rookie of the Year, and the most popular IndyCar driver. It was just three minutes into their final session when Ed Carpenter spun out and turned two. He bounced off the wall and slid down. Spotters immediately warned other drivers of the danger. Several made it past. But rookie Paul Dana, the Ray Hall Letterman team, slammed into Carpenter's car at 176 miles an hour. The two drivers were quickly airlifted to Jackson Memorial Hospital in nearby Miami. And the announcement we all dreaded came at 12.45 p.m. It was made by Brian Barnard. Both drivers were removed from their cars and flown to Jackson Memorial Hospital, where shortly before noon, Paul Dana was pronounced dead from the injuries he suffered in the accident. Uh, obviously, our thoughts and prayers are with uh, the Paul Dana family and everyone associated with the Ray Hall Letterman race team. On March 26, 2006, 30-year-old rookie Paul Dana died after crashing into Ed Carpenter during warm-ups. Danica was one of the three drivers. Ed Carpenter and her teammate Buddy Rice did not start the race at Homestead after Dana's fatal accident. Both Ray Hall Letterman Racing's teammates withdrew from the race out of respect. Danica Patrick and her teammate Buddy Rice started their season at St. Petersburg on the second race of the 2006 season. Surprisingly, her 2006 stats are impressive. Her only DNF was at Michigan was when she ran out of gas. Other than that one DNF, she kept the nose clean. She did not even crash. In 13 of the 14 races she competed, she once again had no wins and no podiums. 
Personally, I am shocked to say this, but she did not lead any laps during the 2006 season. For a driver who had a clean 2006 season who finished 9th in points, she did not lead any laps. That is surprising to me when I was writing my script. Anyway, her best finish was a 4th place finish twice at Nashville in Milwaukee. Her average finish was an 8.6. You can tell that she has improved with Ray Hall Ludman racing between her rookie year and sophomore year. In 2007, Danica Patrick made her move to Andretti Green Racing in a number 7, replacing Brian Herta with a new sponsor, Motorola. Once again, 2007 was another improvement year for Danica with a new team. In 17 races, she once again had no wins. However, she had three podiums at Texas with a third, a third at Nashville, and a second place at Belle Isle. For a driver that isn't even the greatest road racer in IndyCar, that's amazing. A second? Good for her. Her average finish was an 8.2 with a 7th place finish in points. Unfortunately, her highlight of her 2007 season was remembered for her feud with Dan Weldon at Milwaukee. I've been in this business long enough to know when somebody's there and when somebody's not. A pass is a pass. The rivalry between Dan Weldon and Danica Patrick began in 2005 when Weldon won Indianapolis, but Danica won the national spotlight. It was renewed last Sunday at Milwaukee in turn one. Weldon hit me. Weldon came down. Maybe it's a little bit of inexperience on uh, uh, Pop. I'd like to break check Weldon right now. Just rip his front wing off. I was inside you, Dan. Why did you come down on me? He didn't have anything to say. Copyright music. She's just feisty. Did she shove you? She's just being Danica. He was being stubborn. There's a lot of pressure on her, like I say, because she's not won a race. And if he thinks that I'm not going to remember that, crazy. She's messing with the wrong person if she wants to get feisty, that's for sure, because uh, I'm a lot tougher than she is on track. Copyright music again. I'm not trying to get in trouble here. The rivalry continues tonight at Texas. It's three wide. I can't turn down, so you all have to go in in your lane, and that's what I did, and he just came down. Obviously, you just got to be very careful. You don't want to get in the marbles, and she wasn't quite there, so. Go, going through one? <laughs> so. No, it's just one of those things. It's unfortunate, but. And I like the fact that not only did Danica pass more cars than anybody on the track today, she went down, and, and, and she thought she was right, and she went down to Weldon and confronted him. She didn't send her PR man, man down there and, and, and moan in the press. She did what a man would do in a sprint car race. She went down and faced him up head on, and I like that. Well, whose fault it was, I'm not sure. It might just been one of them racing things like AJ said. Also, shout out to Robin Miller for spitting facts, as always. During qualifying at Texas, Danica Patrick and Dan Weldon made up and moved on after the conflict. IndyCar president Brian Barnhart set up a private meeting between herself and Danica, so after that, things were chill. Aside from her issues, Danica had improved herself each year since her rookie year and showed she belongs to the sport. She does not want to be known as some woman racing on open wheels. She proved that she was passionate to the sport and is very competitive. She won some poles, she finished on podiums, she kept the nose clean and is bad fast. However, she is looking for that one thing and one thing only. A win. Not only a win, but to make history. She proved that she can make history in IndyCar. All she needs to do is to close the deal and execute. And execute she did. There are three laps to go this time by. There is second place Danica Patrick. She too on the same fuel strategy as with just about two and a half laps to go. The question is She's who's faster. got it and here she comes. Does she have enough fuel? She's gonna take the high side. And Danica Patrick takes the lead at Motegi. Castro Nevis must believe that he's not gonna make it to the end unless he's throttling back as much as he is. Has she been able to conserve fuel enough to be able to run this pace and make it to the end? That's gonna be the interesting fact right now. Remember we said when these changes went on, will she be on the podium, maybe standing in the middle? This just might be her day. She's run so strong here before. A lap and a half to go for Danica Patrick. Remember at the beginning of this run, she fell back. She was saving fuel. Here she comes. The white flag this time by and nobody within sight. Look at Mom Bev. One and a half miles to go for Danica Patrick and the Motorola team. Could history be made at Twin Ring Motegi? Down the backstretch for one more time. Does she have enough fuel to get around the final two corners? Into turns three and four. 
Danica Patrick coming out of four. And boys, move over. The lady is coming through. Danica Patrick wins a twin ring, Motegi. On April 20th, 2008, at Twin Ring Motegi, Danica Patrick held on to lead for the last three laps and had enough fuel to make history by becoming the very first female driver to win in the IndyCar series. This was not only the biggest news in IndyCar motorsports, once again, this was the biggest news in sports from around the world. It was such a huge deal, she traveled to Long Beach and had TV time on the booth during the final laps at the end of the last ever champ car race at Long Beach. Yikes. Thanks for the memories, champ car. Oh look, it's Will Power's first IndyCar win and third champ car win. All right, all right, all jokes aside and let's not get sidetracked, let's focus on this story. It was still an amazing moment for her and for the sport. After her best moment of her IndyCar career, she had attention, but for the wrong and embarrassing reasons during a practice session at Mid-Ohio. During practice for the Middle Ohio race, Danica tried to get around Milko Duno. Milko was extremely slow and was cutting down on various corners. While Danica was trying to have a conversation with her, typical Milko Duno fashion, Milko was throwing an angry tantrum by throwing a towel at her and blaming Danica for her stupidity. How the hell did this bitch keep a ride until 2010? Like, what the fuck? <sighs> Can someone please keep me away from anything Milko Duno related? I can't. Stand her. Even while writing the script, she still pisses the hell off of me. You know what? I'm gonna continue this video before I fucking lose it. Anyway, let's continue with this video. Anyway, so 2008 was a highlight season for Danica, for better or for worse. But hey, at least she finally got that dub. After 17 of the 18 races she competed, she had one win and one podium. Two DNFs at Candace due to hubcap. She finished 19th over there in a pit road crash with Ryan Briscoe during the 2008 Indianapolis 500. She finished 22nd. Her average finish was a 10.6 and she finished 6 in points. Believe it or not, she was actually 10th in points throughout the entire season. Her highest in points was at 3rd after a win at Motegi. Say what you want about Danica's only IndyCar win being a fluke or lucky because it was a fuel mileage win. But at the end of the day, Danica Patrick won at Motegi and history will always mention her finishing first place at that race. She did what she had to do to win the race by saving fuel and save fuel she did. She is still an IndyCar winner. To this day, she is still the only female driver to win an IndyCar. Give her credit for winning the race. Doesn't matter how she won, she still won. Anyway, on to 2009. In 2009, Danica was looking for another impressive season in her third season with Andretti Green Racing. Danica got a new sponsor, Boostmobile. Her main sponsor was Motorola during the first three races of the 2009 season. Boostmobile made their IndyCar debut with her at the 2009 Indianapolis 500. Danica started 10th at the Brickyard while Elio Castroneves emotionally won his third Indy 500 after sitting behind bars during the offseason and Dan Weldon finishing second in his first season with Panther Racing. Danica Patrick made history once again by setting a new record for the highest place finish for a woman in Indianapolis 500 history by finishing 30 points in her fifth Indy 500 start. To this day, Danica Patrick's historic third place finish at the 2009 Indy 500 still stands for highest female finisher. For the rest of the season, she kept her nose clean and was consistent in points. Unfortunately, Danica did not win a race in 2009, 
but she did have a podium finish at the 2009 Indy 500 by finishing third. One DNF due to a crash at St. Petersburg with Rafael Matos and Mario Marias. She led 26 laps during the season and an average finish of 9.6 and finished fifth in points. She was fifth in points throughout most of the entire season since Texas. That's how consistency her season was. However, on December 8, 2009, Danica Patrick made a shocking announcement to her racing career. You know, the more time she spends here or in and around the race car, the better it'll be for her and her progression. So uh, I also know how tough her schedule is and how difficult that can be. So we'll just make the best of it as it, as, uh, as it goes. What, what is your overarching uh, grand motivation for doing this? Because, you know, immediately you're saying, you know, you want to try it and it's, it's an opportunity that you have, so you, it's there, so you're taking it. But what is the motivation beyond that? Because you're putting your reputation at stake, you're putting, you know, a lot on the line. What are you ultimately trying to achieve, you know, long term? Well, um... A couple of years ago when my contract came about in IndyCar um, with Andretti, I, I really, um, I, I just, I, I was interested in NASCAR, but not, not on a, a big enough level, and I wasn't prepared for the schedule, I wasn't prepared for all that, and I, and I still wanted to just drive IndyCars, and so that's the decision I made, and, you know, I just have to say that at this point in time, I'm much more excited about it, interested in it, I want to see how it goes, um, you know, I, uh, I, I mean, possibly running in Cup one day is 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 a definitely an idea. What do you want to see in these 13 races in 2010 that would make you uh, consider it a success? Um, I think what I'd like to see is, uh, I mean, if we finish top 15 on a weekly basis and, and her confidence is up and she's happy with the results, I think that's what we got to look. We've done a tire test for Goodyear with Kelly and... Uh, He's uh, helping Danica out at Walt Disney World last week. Uh, we had two cars there. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's done everything we've asked him to do. Uh, we see a lot of talent here. Hopefully we're going to pick up right where uh, Brad left off. If you leave the Denny Hamlin part out. Uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we're hoping Brad took that over to Pinsky with him. So... Uh, <laughs> Very impressed with what happened at Disney World with uh, Danica last week. Uh, was not ready for what we seen. I wasn't. Uh, I don't know how anybody else felt, but uh, very impressed. We only got uh, like four and a half hours of running because of weather. Uh, but in the four and a half hours that she was in the car, I think she got out one time for a break. And uh, we ran constantly. And there's cars testing there this week. And... Uh, We've run as fast or faster than those cars have run this week. So uh, I don't know. You know, what do we think? We haven't seen her in traffic, uh, except with Kelly. Her and Kelly run a little bit uh, just to let her feel the air moving around and uh, in front and in behind what the push is going to do. And we work real hard on a lot of other stuff, you know, like pit road. That she's got to learn to pit. I mean, everything's different in these cars. So our intention is to go win that ARCA race with Danica. And, uh, and another thing to, about the schedule is, is uh, Joe Ballas is standing back there. We've got to get his approval before Danica can run Daytona. So uh, that's another reason you run the ARCA race. Danica, what, ha, how have you uh, felt the reaction has been since you announced this in Phoenix, the explosion of attention and reaction? Anything surprise you at all? Um, there's a lot of y'all here. I said y'all. Um, <laughs> I think I might pick up the accent pretty easy if I spend ex extended periods of time here. On December 8, 2009, Danica Patrick announced she was going to do part-time NASCAR races and would make her stock car debut in the ARCA Racing Series at Daytona. In her last two full seasons in IndyCar, Danica started to perform decently but not as well as she used to. She did not DNF in 2010 and 2011. Her best finishes between 2010. 10 and 2011 were two second place finishes at Texas and Homestead in 2010. In 2010, she got two podiums from finishing second in those races and an average finish of 11.4 and finished 10th in the points. In her final full season in IndyCar, 2011 was another not so good season. 
She had no wins and no podiums. Once again, no DNFs and an average finish of 12.4 and finished 10th in points once again. Unfortunately, her final race as a full-time IndyCar driver ended with tragedy. On lap 11, a horrifying turn 1 crash at Las Vegas Motor Speedway took place, claiming the life of two-time Indianapolis 500 champion and 2005 IndyCar champion Dan Walden. Well, we're all very sad. Um, he was a friend of all of ours. He'll be missed. And uh, I just feel for his family. The race was abandoned after the five-lap salute honoring Dan Weldon, and Danica Patrick finished 12th. After Vegas, Danica donated $21,843 to a trust fund to the Weldon family. Coming into the 2011 NASCAR Nationwide Series Fall Race at Texas Motor Speedway, Danica Patrick honored the late Dan Weldon by wearing a tribute helmet. Go Daddy and Danica also added a hood tribute to Dan that says, Lionheart, 1978-2011, through 2011, Dan Weldon. A special tribute indeed, honoring an IndyCar legend who was gone too soon. Now Danica is off to NASCAR racing full-time in a Nationwide Series in 2012 and full-time Cub Racing in 2013. And unfortunately, we all know what happened in NASCAR. Danica, I understand you have some, uh, some news you want to share with us today. I do? Please go right ahead. Oh yeah, that's right. We did call this, didn't we? Um, yeah, uh, so this will be my last, uh, season as a full-time driver. My sister told me I was supposed to get emotional. <laughs> I said I wouldn't. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm grateful for all the opportunities. Um, I'm thankful for uh, Dale and Kelly and Bob Parsons from GoDaddy for getting me into NASCAR. Um, thank you uh, to Tony and Jean. <laughs> There's too many of you here. So, okay, okay, but I'm not totally done. I am going to do the Daytona 500 next year and the Indy 500. So I'm really excited about that. I, I think it's going to be a great way to cap it off. On November 17th, 2017, Danica Patrick announced that she would hang up her helmet after competing in the 2018 Daytona 500 and the 2018 Indianapolis 500. On January 2018, GoDaddy and Danica Patrick would reunite for the last time to do the Danica Double farewell at Daytona and Indianapolis. On March 2018, it was announced that Danica Patrick would be the third driver for Ed Carpenter Racing to race at the Indy 500 in the number 13. In her final 500, Danica made it to the Fast 9 and started in 7th place. Unfortunately, on lap 68, Danica Patrick lost control and crashed outside the treacherous turn 2 wall while running 13th it would finish 30th in her final IndyCar race. After a bad way to end her racing career and hang up her helmet, she continues to be an IndyCar by being IndyCar and NBC's all-star commentators. Personally, I'm looking forward to that. Woo IndyCar! Throughout her racing career, some folks criticized her for being a publicity stunt in motorsports or a mediocre driver. On the other hand, she has inspired young girls to be future race car drivers. To me, Danica's IndyCar career was pretty good, consistent, and clean. Yes, Danica is not a legend. However, she has made a lot of history in IndyCar and the Indianapolis 500. Personally, her racing career would have looked as spectacular if it wasn't for her move to NASCAR. Unfortunately, people see her as a terrible driver It was only in racing because of money, attention, and her gender. That is not completely true. She did not come from a rich family. She earned her IndyCar career with no spoon in her mouth. She's one of the most impressive female IndyCar drivers out there. People debate her move to NASCAR. 
Some say she got into NASCAR because NASCAR pays more. Others say she moved to NASCAR because she was a better oval racer and ovals suit her well. However, I don't let anybody's debates change my mind because in my personal opinion, Danica Patrick's IndyCar career was consistently good and it deserves more attention than her NASCAR career. I always wanted to do a video about Danica's IndyCar career because it deserves more attention and I personally appreciate her IndyCar career way more than her NASCAR career. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Racing Stories. I want to thank once again Mike and Steven from Indy Fanatics for joining this episode. Give them a lot of support by subscribing to them. If there was some information I missed or got wrong, please feel free to respectfully tell me in the comments below. I want to thank you all so much for watching this episode. Comment like... Comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social accounts. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube channel notifications for more racing stories and more motorsports content. Thank you all so much for supporting E-Nation. This is the Impress 48 signing off. Goodbye, everybody.